why not compare Poco F5's camera with the iPhone 13 Pro Max just to see how far, or how close, mid-range phones have progressed in photo quality. Yes, I'm well aware that the 13 Pro Max isn't the latest and most powerful camera Apple has right now, but it's arguably the second best camera iPhone right now. And it's basically what I have and I don't have any plans to spend a ton of money again for a moving notch. Anyway, I've shot several scenes with these two phones including portraits, ultrawide and night shots. But before we get into the comparisons, here's a quick rundown of the camera specs. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has 4 12 megapixel sensors for wide, ultrawide, telephoto and selfie, while the Poco F5 has a 64 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel ultrawide, 2 megapixel macro and 16 megapixel selfie. It doesn't have a dedicated telephoto lens, but with a 64 megapixel mode, we expect it to be useful enough in cropping photos to 2x with better detail quality than regular mode. Now, let's start with an auto shot with a subject and a wide background to test out the dynamic range of each camera. Right off the bat, there is a stark difference between the two photos. At a glance, you would probably lean towards the F5's photo, and I would understand for the reason it's the brighter shot and more colorful, as you can see from the brown jacket in the trees. The white balance of the two seems to be similar, if not identical. However, if you focus on the clouds, the highlights have a purple tint in the F5's photo. You will also notice the pine trees having brighter and near yellow colors as opposed to the HDRE looks on the iPhone, which, by the way, is closer to the actual color when we shot this scene. And if we zoomed in, we can see the advantage of having a huge sensor as the 64 megapixel of the F5 preserved better detail than the iPhone. Overall, the differences between the photos are minimal but noticeable. I expect more people to pick the F5's photo simply because it's brighter and the colors pop out more. And if you're going to ask a group of regular smartphone users, most of them tend to choose the brighter and more saturated photo than the one with a natural look to it. Switching to the ultra-wide lens, both phones are consistent with their look. The Poco F5 is still bright and all, while the iPhone 13 Pro Max is still contrasty and kinda dark. But now, we can tell that the iPhone has a wider field of view and a sharper ultra-wide lens. It's 8 megapixel versus 12 megapixels, so it's to be expected. However, the wider field of view made the edges of the photo distorted. In another wide photo, but with the subject closer, the F5 has drastically changed its look since the first two photos, however, that's because you're now looking at a 64 megapixel mode. So in exchange for more details and sharpness, the F5 toned down its HDR. The so-called downgrade of HDR doesn't seem to be that bad for the F5 as we can still see every part of the subject as they appear in the iPhone's photo. However, as we zoom in on the face of the subject, you will notice that the iPhone managed to preserve the details in the shadows as seen from the mark of the mouth of the subject. Additionally, the F5 seems to lean more towards the warm yellow tones whereas the iPhone tries its best to remain accurate with its cool green tint in the trees. As for the next set of photos, we switch to the 12 megapixel 12 photo lens of the iPhone while we use the 2x zoom of the Poco 64 megapixel mode. And here you can see the huge difference between the two. The iPhone gave us the best and most accurate photo yet while the Poco phone struggled to apply proper HDR or lack thereof. My fear is that Poco tried to expose the mask and not the entire subject with the motorcycle hence the higher ISO or brighter output. I tried fixing the photo in post, but since the highlights were initially blown out, you simply lose all the details there. In this portrait shot using the main camera of each phone, Poco once again exposed the mask, although it did better in managing the brightest level of the other parts of the image like the jacket and the background this time around, the helmet and the face were simply overexposed. And if you take a look at the background of the iPhone's photo, it has a natural bokeh effect that makes the subject stand out a little bit more. And despite the 64 megapixel sensor of the Poco phone, the iPhone has the sharper image here. Turning on portrait mode for each phone, the iPhone pulled away in this comparison. The Poco phone clearly struggled to maintain any kind of HDR in this comparison. From another angle with better lighting for the subject, we have a better comparison. Immediately, you will notice the difference in the color of the jacket. Basically, the iPhone has the closest rendition to reality, although Poco did a better job here in exposing every part of the image, now, the iPhone still had better dynamic range and sharpness. In portrait mode, the difference lies in the cutout and the bokeh effect. While both did well in cutting out the edges of the subject, both had trouble including the hair on the right side of the image. 
However, the iPhone's subject separation algorithm is a bit more complicated than Poco's. As you can see from the elbow part of the subject, Poco simply cut out the subject and put it in focus while the iPhone's blur effect slightly rolls off to the background. And this is the kind of effect that you get when using professional cameras like mirrorless or DSLRs. Comparing the 16 megapixel selfie camera of the Poco F5 and the 12 megapixel of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we see another win for the iPhone. I think we're seeing just a better algorithm from Apple here with its preserved highlights, better contrast, and better exposure. The F5, while usable, looks a bit overexposed but still respectable. Turning on portrait mode, the iPhone 13 Pro Max cropped in a bit closer, hence the F5 having a wider field of view but, yet again, beats the F5 in terms of overall quality despite both struggling to properly separate the subject. Moving indoors with window lighting mixed with several artificial lights, we still get good-looking shots from both phones. However, the iPhone's warm and better highlight preservation gave the better-looking photo here. It matched the theme of the photo very well, but with a little tweaking of contrast and adjusting the saturation and temperature of the F5, you can also achieve a similar look. And once again, that 64-megapixel sensor is really edging out the 12-megapixel on the iPhone in detail preservation. With the ultra-wide cameras, again, we're just getting an extended look from both photos. Only this time, the iPhone pulls away with better colors, details, and sharpness across the board. As for the Poco F5, that's still a respectable output. In extreme low-light mode, it's another close call between the two. At a glance, you might think that these photos were taken with the same phone, but as seen from the road, it's the only stark difference between the two. But once you zoom in, the iPhone's algorithm preserves better details here. Although you can use ultra-wide night mode on the Poco F5, it's not as impressive as the iPhones, which is expected but worth pointing out. So that's how the Poco F5 stacks up against the iPhone 13 Pro Max. No one's probably going to compare the two when buying their next phone since they are priced differently and marketed differently. But with the iPhones of the world being the benchmark of smartphones when it comes to camera quality, well, here's your answer. The iPhone 13 Pro Max may be expensive and all, but the Poco F5 can give you near iPhone quality photos from time to time and it's not even a camera-centric phone. Either way, that's been it. Let me know if you want to see more comparisons like this where we compare the mid-range phones to expensive ones just to see where your mid-range phone stacks up against the best. Tap us up more like if you feel like supporting the channel and as always, until the next one, stay safe.